Hi, everybody. Nick Blazier here with James McNaughton. <laughs> Was that pretty good? All right. All right. We're doing uh, a quick interview to talk about this Stream Champs idea we had. Some backgammon matches online stuff we'll be playing here. Give the format about that. And then figure it'd be a cool time to like have James on and talk a little bit about what he's doing with his channel and stuff like that, too. We've been meaning to sync up for a while. It's been a while since I've done an interview. I'm still out here. My book's still available, I'm sure. James has some stuff he can share, too. Um, but yeah, we'll get into it. Hi, James. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> hey, Dave. Great to be here. Thank you for inviting me onto your channel. Big yeah. fan. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, man. I know you reached out a while ago. You've been running a, a YouTube channel of your own, too, right? That I can like link here. But yeah, what's yeah, of that? course. The link uh, will be in the description. Yeah, Nick. Sweet. Okay. Okay. I'll work on that. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be somewhere. Uh, it's, yeah. It's, my, my channel is the channel for my club, actually, the Paris Vido. Paris okay. Vido. Vido means doubling cube in French. So oh, and it's the name okay. of the club. Gotcha. So um, it started with that. And uh, when I arrived at the club, and uh, we didn't have a channel. So I was like, join a channel. And they said, yeah. And, uh, and I started doing that just to, to stream our live tournaments. And then it went up to streaming. Uh, um, the national circuit HSBT uh, tournaments. And then uh, we do quite a lot of online things of uh, the French national championship online at the moment, which is pretty cool. So I do live commentary for that and I try and mix it up and uh, essentially just kind of promote backgammon in French. It's actually it's quite funny uh, speaking in English on, on a channel. I'm not used to it. Um, so yeah, so I try and get uh, other people involved, try and promote French players and French tournaments. Uh, but also, international games are always fun. I think, uh, Nick, you're in the, uh, you played in the World uh, Club Championships, is that right? Maybe. Yes, the, I did, the, I did. In Chicago? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And those, those ones are quite fun when they're online. You can play against these giants of backgammon. I played against uh, Joe Russell a while ago, which was cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's it's just been good. And um getting kind of recognition within France for that. And that's quite cool. People rocking up to tournaments and people uh, say hi. So, oh, OK, uh, that's cool. Uh, very, very niche celebrity. Very, very niche. <laughs> I can relate. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. some people that definitely know who I am and, and most people don't. So. <laughs> you're, you're the Nick Blazer. <laughs> <laughs> right. At a backgammon tournament, I am. In, in other oh, locations, but... maybe not, you know. <laughs> oh, so you could have turned up at an airport and people are like, what's that? Is that him? Is that right. the Nick Blazer? <laughs> I I have been recognized. I got to share an Uber to a tournament from an airport once because someone recognized me at the airport. So yeah, yeah, it's the closest to recognition I've gotten. Oh, Mostly no one recognizes me at the airport. You haven't had to sign any clothes. <laughs> no, nope, I haven't gotten to do that yet either. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> but, but okay. Um, so how long have you been doing the YouTube channel for then? Uh, it's been maybe a year and a half. Okay. Um, I've been doing uh, commentated matches maybe for about a year. It really started um, with uh, last year's uh, Fran online French national championships because there's always people I know that are going to be playing. And uh, we, got, we do have some strong players, but we've got a good mix. So, um, Sweet. I imagine it's the same in every country. <laughs> yeah. We've got some grandmasters and some you know, other masters. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so it's just going to have grown from there. And I try and uh, just keep it going. I try and do a video every week or so, but uh, it's not always possible. Okay. Um, are they yeah. always just like match and commentary videos too? Or are you trying to branch out into other things? What are you doing? I have done occasional teaching things, but uh, there's already the French Federation has a, a really good uh, YouTube channel with lots of, uh, of quite educational uh, content. So oh, wow. like for French people, if you're if, if you speak French and you want to, to learn about that, then there's not that much I can add. Mm. And the people that, that do it are stronger than me anyway and understand the concepts much better. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, stay, I'll stay on my side of the fence. I'm entertainment. <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, your English is like super good. Are, are you native French or English speaker? No, no, I'm, I'm British. British. Uh, been, British. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah, yeah. I've been living in France uh, since 2009. So it's been a while. Okay. Okay. But wow. So, okay. So you picked up the French well enough that you can do commentary in it. That seems tough yeah i try, I try to maintain my, my charming british accent <laughs> <laughs> um um I, I always knew the british things would kind of go into my french uh commentary but i didn't realize and actually uh, we'll get, talk to get on to a bit uh, maybe in a minute uh but um 
like French has come into my British, my English uh, when talking about backgammon. I, I translated a book, which we'll, we will talk about. Yeah. And um, uh, I had no idea, but uh, uh, in French, uh, you say shoot to, to shoot when you when when you, you put a check around the bar. Yeah. So I was like, oh yeah, that must be in English. I shoot, and then um, the book came out, and people were like, it's great, but nobody says shoot. It's hit or. <laughs> Oh, I had no idea. Like my entire backgammon career has been in France, so I watch I watch content, but uh, but that's about it. Well, that makes me want to read the book like a whole bunch more, actually, just to see what like French English sounds like in <laughs> strategy, right? I love all the the names for things, and they're just I don't know. There's always discrepancies there, but yeah. What is? Tell me about the book. Let's let's. All get right, this that. book yeah. is uh, from a legend of French backgammon, Francois Tardieu. Yeah. This is a backgammon strategic concept. Yeah. Highly recommend it. Uh, it was written, it was released in French, I think about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I spent three months last year translating it um, into English. And uh, I'm pretty sure I did a good job. I learned a lot. Um, but just from going through it and absorbing everything, I think uh, I went, my PR dropped a little bit. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's all you can really want from a book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really good. It's based, uh, it's built around, um, uh specific concepts like um uh pay now pay later when to leave your anchor bad games uh, and things like that it doesn't cover the cube mm -hmm. so we're hoping that francois will write a follow-up uh but uh it's it's a really good book and it is available um if you're in europe you can buy it directly from the french uh federation the ffbg if you're in the united states i have been reliably informed that you can contact carol joy or roberto litzenberger who i think oh, are friends of yours yes yeah, yeah. and uh and they they're the distributors uh, stateside yeah they're like um they carry my books around as well they're, they're, they're the people <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the dealers <laughs> yeah exactly exactly the book dealers yep yeah first one's free <laughs> <laughs> i think carol deals books exclusively at tournaments mostly or maybe online mm -hmm. as well but like no. Roberto, I think might actually own a used bookstore or something like. That. Oh, that, that's yeah. interesting. We're, I don't. I, I yeah. haven't met either of them. Uh, are they New York based or are they uh, elsewhere? Uh, Carol is in Michigan, near All Detroit. Right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in Roberto, I think I mean Argentina maybe, but for a while I think it was North Carolina. Um, and also well, that's just a culture like shock. traveling <laughs> to play backgammon. So I, I don't know if he needs a home, you know, so. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so they're around the Litzenbergers you see at most of the tournaments, I feel like. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. That's super cool though, that you got involved in translating that as well. That seems quite useful and exciting that like, you know, I don't know, English speakers can get into this book now too. I had, I had oh, seen posts sure. around it and stuff. I don't yeah. know if Francois is a player very much though. Like, let's, do you have like a brief history of like, I don't know. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's considered one of the, the giants of, uh, of French Bagam and he, he actually stopped playing, uh, they had like a 20 year break and he's only just come back to it. So okay. like up until like the early, uh, early mid 2000s, uh, he was one of the, the group of, of like very top uh, like French players internationally. And uh, if you talk to uh, uh, to the older generation, like Bob Wachtel or Steve Sachs, um, they they'll know who he is. They'll, they'll probably have played with him. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, he uh, I think he he was a French national champion at least once, um, and he was a, a, a great money player. Got but it. he took he took twenty years off. But he actually came back. He was at uh, the national championships uh, last October. It was really good to see, and he still got it. Yeah. If someone yeah. transcribed his matches, he was still playing at about a four or five, even after 20 years off. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, it, what was quite cool is the, um, unlike a lot of books that are, that have not held up well, this one was, this was actually put together from articles he'd written 20 years ago before, uh, before XG was really used. Wow. And uh, obviously some things haven't hold, held up and they haven't made it into the book. But uh, it's it's quite amazing just the the concepts he he understood and have been um, corroborated by uh, by the software we use. Um, there yeah. there is some equity in there, but it's uh, it's it's designed so you can understand it without having to to do the maths. Oh, cool. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was very much curious about that. If he's writing from the perspective of what he figured out twenty years ago, mainly, or if he's like, is he working with the bots now, or has he been as he comes back to the game? You know, like what does that look like? <laughs> I, I think he's probably dabbling, but uh, he I think he's got to be in his 60s uh, at the moment, so 60s yeah. or 70s. Uh, he, 
I've, I've met him a few times. He doesn't strike me as a person who, who spends a lot of time looking at match equity tables and yeah, uh, yeah, using using rollouts. So, uh, but I'd be I'd be fascinated to see um, how he'd approach a, a book on the cube uh, and see whether his his concepts, his approaches uh, back in the day uh, still hold up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds really cool. Is there like one strategic concept that like really sticks out for you that you like want to share or something like that? Something that really like helps you to think about? Um, yeah, there's one. I was actually uh, in in the back game section, which is uh, right at the back. Yeah, um, fittingly. <laughs> but uh, um, it's actually uh, when, when you are coming in against when you're playing against uh, back games uh, and just um, really prioritizing flexibility and purity mm -hmm. and the things that I'd never really considered as much before. Just I'll oh, bring everyone in safely. It's like now uh, a lot of the time it's a huge error like, not to slot if it's going to just um, give you safety now, but it will destroy your position into roles. I never really considered that. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, there's quite a few. The, the chapter, especially on when to leave your anchor, is uh, really worth a read because it's something that I still have trouble with. Yeah. And I uh, imagine a lot of players do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a very difficult one. And when it's right or wrong, like the magnitude of the the error, the decision is tends to be large. It's actually oh, it kind of lost, hard yeah. to get into exceptional positions where ah, you can leave it or not. Who cares, right? Yeah. Like usually, it's very right or very wrong. <laughs> so, mm. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And I've, I've, I've I think I've rocked up a five hundred blunder from that at least once or twice. So. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, that's you, you do. Yeah. <laughs> they're the ones that you remember for sure. For sure. <laughs> Hopefully, anyway. Uh, indeed, indeed. Uh, I should uh, put out that I'm going to be hosting on my channel the Bullier tournament, which is the International Bullier tournament in June. Okay. So I don't know if you're going to be there. Uh, it'd be cool if you were. It's in the sunny south of France. So you know, get in touch with Patricia, the, the wonderful Patricia Ray, who, um, who is the president of the uh, Monaco Backgammon Club, and she's the one hosting it. Okay. So um, it's it's a really good tournament. So I'll be doing the I'll be streaming the, the matches from there, and I'll be playing as well. So I, I was there you. last year. It was a lot of fun. Um, so tune well, in if you're not going to be there. Just watch it. I will. I will. Yeah. Good. I have no plans to travel to France at the moment, but I'm always available. <laughs> you know, so, with, some help, with some help. <laughs> hey, so the, the Côte d'Azur in, in June is, is a nice place to be. What can I say? <laughs> oh, yeah. You're spending four days in a, in a casino. Yeah, you, you want to be outside a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's awesome. It's good getting to know you, James. I'm glad to finally get on and like talk a little bit. And we're going to be playing a match here, too. I'll get to figure out what kind of player you are. We haven't talked about like your goals there exactly. Um, oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, well, maybe let's jump into the stream champs thing real quick though. What is, tell me what we're doing with that. I, I mean, I've been involved in the chat, but I'm gonna pretend like I don't know yeah. so you can explain on a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so essentially it started with uh, just a, a group chat, I think uh, started by uh, Simon Bargett, yeah. friend of both of ours. Mm -hmm. uh, he's unfortunately not gonna be playing, but essentially putting, um, people who host YouTube channels, backgammon YouTube channels together to see if we can uh, collaborate and, and do something that will you know, make uh, backgammon more entertaining and accessible and democratic for everyone and kind of get people that are working more or less within their own bubble and kind of put it, putting it out. And we've got nine people, nine streamers uh, across a load of different countries, actually. You, you are the only representative from the States, so no, you, no, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, large flag to carry. <laughs> yeah, we've got a couple of, of Germans. We have Reinhard Berkel and, of course, Dirk Schiemann. Uh, I think he's pr probably the, the favorite <laughs> for this tournament. But Maybe, yeah. He's quite, quite a strong player. <laughs> he does okay. Quite a strong player. Uh, there's me in France. There's uh, John Giorgio and Daniel Rivera in the UK. Daniel Rivera from uh, the wonderful Backgammon is Beautiful channel. I'm sure you know it. Yeah. Does yeah. great videos. Yeah. And everyone does great videos. So I'm not going to... I'm not gonna. Uh, elevate anyone else. Uh, Genovaro Sana from Italy. We got, and we got two Russians, uh, Hanna Polyakova and Denis Mikhailov. Um, I, I don't know whether Hanna streams in English or in Russian. I'd be interested by that. She doesn't have that many videos up yet, but that will come. Yeah. And Denis, uh, I had a quick look at his channel earlier. He's got some quite cool matches. Uh, he's quite taciturn. He doesn't talk a lot, so it's an interesting approach. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so it's kind of an international uh, tournament. Everyone's going to be playing everyone else. Yeah. We're going to be tracking PR, but points are for the win. 
And uh, yeah, essentially uh, 30, um, 36 matches okay. over eight rounds. And uh, well, yeah, over nine rounds. Uh, and yeah, yeah, it should be it should be good fun. This is going to be uh, like we're kicking it off. I think this is going to be the first match. John and Reyna are playing a bit later. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got so to meet we're... John and Dan at the uh, UK Open. And oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. They're both, I mean, Dan, of course, super nice guy in person. John is, plays exactly how he advertises. <laughs> and stuff. It was super exciting matches to commentate. Uh, I, I, so, I, I love yeah. his analogies. They're, they're wonderful. <laughs> yeah, he's a blast. So that should yeah. be a lot of fun to have in there, too. Um, but yeah, okay. So nine, you said uh, thirty six matches. How does that does that come out to like? Are we playing everyone it. four times? No, no. Everyone plays each other once, so okay, it's. Okay, uh, yeah. um, but it works out essentially. Every round is four matches, two yeah, versus yeah. two, and there's nine nine of those. So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. I guess yeah, and it's gonna be it's gonna be played on the wonderful Pagama Studio Heroes, possibly yeah. Hero Three, hosted by. Terje or Terje? I don't know. I uh, Peter. Terje, yeah, yeah. I learned Terje. this at some point. I should go back and consult my interview with him so that I know. <laughs> Terje Peterson. Pronouncing names that. is hard. I can't. I didn't forgot to ask you again. I just guess. I get close lately, though. You know, like oh, you, guess, yeah. you guess enough at tournaments and you start to like you're in the ballpark. <laughs> so. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so yeah, so it's, 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 it, these are not huge matches. These are not WBIF matches. They're not. Right. It's not going to be like video for two hours normally. Right. There's no uh, buy-in like, that I owe, no prize I'm going to win, right? <laughs> like the honor. And uh, well, once we yeah. get the, the big sponsors and the big money coming in for the next season, then you know, then then we can we can start looking at uh <laughs> at prizes. But right, right now, it's, it's all about the glory. Yeah. Uh, and being being the the champion streamer. Yeah. Uh, and you know, the stiff competition. I would say you're probably um, second favorite after uh, Dirk Schumann. You're master one, right? Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't been like studying real hard, but playing some speed gammon and still holding around like uh, I don't know, like high fours or something like that. So should do pretty okay. impressive. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, I've been most of my work's been going towards. I'm still trying to get like a second book out, and I think I've made a lot of progress on that lately. So maybe, maybe we'll see it. Someday. Can you give us uh, some hints about what it's going to be about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I've actually done some lectures on some of the findings from it already. But uh, it's all third roll score cues. Um, so like oh, cool. you know, weird stuff where you get into, you win the opening roll, your opponent replies, and you have a cube at four way, two way. Mm. Um, I just thought it'd be fun to like exhaustively get all those out and show kind of the trends or that that comes up. It's an easy thing if you're not, if you haven't studied it to just skip over and never think about it, right? So oh, for sure. But it's, I, it's, for, for me, it's, it's the, 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 the fun score. I love it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, when, I, when I'm trailing. But when I'm winning, uh, like two away, four away, I, I like it less. <laughs> less fun. Less fun. Yeah, that's for sure. But yeah, I think I'm really close to having all those to find out. And like, I want to write it out and see what that chunk of the book looks like. And I expect that there's going to be room also to get into fourth roll normal score cubes. So like yeah. your opening five splits is like the classic example of that. But there's actually like that's there aren't infinite of those either. There's studyable like the second roll, right? So I just mm. thought it'd be a nice like opening cube reference and it'll be less like explanatory, like my match playbook and more a lot of positions and a lot of like sort of a little more like nerdy and technical to look through, right? And okay. probably you don't want to memorize it all. I don't know if someone can do that, but it's like seeing it and spending time with it. I mean, it's helped my game immensely just to like not to have to think as much in the opening like like I kind of know if I've like seen a position like this and that it might be a cube or not. And that's the end of it. Instead of having mm -hmm. to like rationalize why, like try to use Pratt on the third roll. Or something like this. Right? Yeah, like, that's, it's just too much. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. well, these things you, you generally know them or you don't, or you kind of develop a feel for them, I think. Right, right. Um, yeah. Like a, a lot of the ones I see and I can kind of intuit that it's probably a cube, even though I couldn't necessarily explain why. Right, exactly. Yeah, some of them just help to like memorize a little bit or like no thresholds, you know, so. Yeah, oh, fantastic. I look forward to reading it. Yeah, it's so many more positions, which has just been like a slog to try to like <laughs> put that into a book, you know. Oh, um, for sure. But I'm, but I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting somewhere. <laughs> so, That's yeah. <laughs> but anyway, Nick, thank you so much for having me on your channel. I, I suggest we, we play some backgammon. That sounds good. Let's play a match, man. Yeah, we'll get our kickoff. All maybe. Right. 
Reiner, sorry, Reiner and John are playing there. Reiner and John, let's pit them to the post. I think they're starting in half an hour. Okay. So we'll get there. Reiner will be streaming it, so people will have access to it earlier, but we'll have the uh, the moral victory, cool. I think. What kind of play should I expect from you? What are what are, do you have a BMAB ranking yet? Uh yeah, I just got uh M3. M3. Uh, okay, that's awesome. Recently. How have so, you been playing a while then? More than that year and a half on the channel? Uh yeah, I've been playing about two years. Hmm. So um that's really good to be like M3 in two years, I think. You know, that's a lot to learn. You play Yeah, like well I, I, I host or... every I try to do it every six six weeks to two months, uh, a little BMAB tournament in our club. Awesome. You get like okay. 12 to 14 players and uh we yeah. actually we actually play in this uh in this uh restaurant uh bar restaurant which is like literally a five minute walk from the arc de triomphe in oh. paris oh wow okay which is, uh it is, it's fantastic and um uh, we, we meet there quite a lot we were there every tuesday and friday okay and we, we've just opened up a third club night in eastern paris on a wednesday too so yeah it's, it's cool. If you're ever in Paris, make sure you come and join us. I would love to come to Paris sometime. <laughs> but okay, so like two years into the game too. I I, um, I imagine in your studying hard and have like aspirations of passing me up in short time. Well, we'll see. We'll see. But like a year ago when I came in, I, I was the, the young talent. And now the new young talent has arrived and I'm, all, I'm already the establishment. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the new young talent? Do we know? Oh, or... uh, yeah. There's uh, some new young players like... Um, like Third, like around late twenties, early thirties, that are coming in, and uh, oh, cool! We got a guy who is quite quite a good chess. Well, he's quite a good chess player. He come, he's come in and like since his first year playing, he's already playing frequently around five or six, which is scary. Yeah. Um, a couple strong. of um, there's a, a couple of players that have come up from Marseille. Do you know there's a, a French grandmaster called uh, Tristan Remy? I don't know if you know him. I don't think I've met him. No. Yeah. He actually has a channel as well. It's not quite as active. As uh, as uh, as ours, but uh, it's very good. I would recommend it. Okay. Uh, cool. It's called uh, the Board de Bagamon à Blender. Link is in the description. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good man. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, so um, yeah, lo lots of young talent, and it's uh, it's really good to see. Awesome, man. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. It's uh, cool to be. So I mean, it's exciting to hear all that a whole bunch of new blood is showing up over there too. You know, that's like the big fear in backgammon. Like, you know, a lot of I don't know how do we catch the interest of new players kind of right there aren't a ton of new oh for sure, people for sure. yeah well we're not we're not at the, the level of chess where they've kind of got a huge influx of teenagers coming in yeah um i don't think backgammon is ever gonna get that that kind of uh yeah. explosive among the very young but uh yeah you see a lot of people that come in from other games like from bridge or from uh yeah from chess from uh from poker they come in and they, they want something a bit different and they and they they can find it in backgammon so it's uh we're we're we're, we're a broad church what can i say yeah we'll take everyone <laughs> i mean we've got hannah i think isn't she she did a video with like michi or something in like yeah, 14, yeah. Is that right yeah so younger player uh, for latest one um make sure you check it out link description etc etc <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so we got plug, some plug, showing plug. up there was, I met, uh, there's a Hannah that runs around the U.S. backgammon tournaments that's been watching everything, too. I, I don't know. I am? Maybe like nine or ten or something like that, too. But, you know, there's some younger people getting interested, you know? I don't know. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it's time for it to catch. We'll see. Hey, it's, maybe, it's getting to yeah. have a bit of a, a renaissance, I think, in the game. Like, yeah. uh, we're not, maybe not back in, like, the 70s where it's all glamour and yachts and money everywhere. But uh, right. a bit more cerebral and, um, yeah. I, I like it. It's, uh, you no, feel I found, the mind I found it side of it, then? Sorry? I said you feel the mind sports side of it then, like more than yeah, uh, for sure, like poker and um, gamble for a living kind of side. Yeah, yeah, that, that I don't know. Playing for money is not really my thing. I love I love tournaments, um, and also I, lo I love the fact that there's still an element of chance. Like yeah. uh, I, I can I can rock up against Dirk Sheeman and in a seven point match. Uh, all right, I've probably got maybe a forty percent chance of winning. Yeah, uh, 35, 40 percent chance of winning. Yeah. Uh, whereas if like. If I was like the similar level in chess and I rocked up against uh, Magnus Carlsen, I, I would have been zero, <laughs> zero at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It keeps it interesting, I think. I think those are, I liked more chess like games younger in my life and I've gravitated toward, more towards the chance ones. They're harder to learn too, you know? Yeah. Like you don't get that luxury of just like following a path and getting it exactly right and then trying to build from there. Like it's going to be different every time. And, Good luck yeah, organizing exactly. everything you're learning. <laughs> you know, so. Well, I think I think like in in every every match you play, you'll you'll find positions you've never seen before, and frequently positions that nobody has ever seen before, which is is crazy. Right. I find that amazing. Yeah. Um. 
and and yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 a wonderful thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's not there's not you don't have the memorization that you have in chess. Yeah. Which is yeah. Off Even the sort of memorizable pieces like the second role study and stuff like going through this book that I'm working on, there are like second role four way two way plays that I did not know and didn't think about. You know, and like I still. I'm sure they've come up and I've seen them or maybe I have or and forgotten about them. I don't really know, but yeah, I don't know. There's always a surprise in this game, even in the parts that you thought you had like exhaustively memorized. <laughs> you know? so, yeah. but I have to say it's, uh, it's, it's an argument for maybe using a more creative opening because if you do like a, a small error in an opening, all right, you're losing a bit of equity there. Yeah. But if it's something, if you're taking your opponent out of, you know, yeah. their preparation, then uh, you could uh, yeah. maybe get, get a decisive advantage quite early on. I forget which way Albert Stagg argues about this too, but like I think um, with the 6-4 opening, he wrote a whole article about this, I think. Mm. He's a U.S. player in the, in the Northeast. Um, but I think he was talking about like switching the point, and it was a nice change at first because a lot of people at the time didn't know responses to it. But then he also found that he did not know how to follow up. I think it was after pointing was the one where he had no idea, like it was just lost. Yeah. Completely. Like doesn't mm -hmm. like there's some really complicated third role and beyond plays. Right. And so he concluded like, this is not worth playing this way to me. And I'm just going to split. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> like, there's lots of stuff like that, you know, like there's, there's, I, I don't know. Like I've always been of the, the mindset that I'm not good at the game enough to know which way is going to be easier. So I might as well just like learn the right way and try to follow that. <laughs> you know? but, yeah. but I think there's like a lot of adjustment truth to that of like, how do you organize mm -hmm. the information into something you can execute, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I suppose you, you, you might, you might tailor it to your opponent as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like maybe make a slight inaccuracy at the beginning to, to get a more complex game. So your sure. advantage yeah. is, yeah. is more concrete over the long term. Yeah. Um, so there's, uh, yeah. there's, I've got a, a, a few kind of sweat players. That are a bit more flamboyant. I'll do like their their four one. They'll be uh, 20, 24, 20, 6, 5 nice. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. You, <laughs> well, you want both five points. Why wouldn't you start them both? <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but frequently double slots in the board. It's uh, it's it's, yeah. it's cool to watch and at least interesting matches. Absolutely. And um, a lot of people that have kind of grown up, I say grown up, um, just you know memorizing these openings. They they see something a bit wacky. That all right? It's not a huge blunder. It's like a forty error. Uh, and they'll be like, I have no idea what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think, um, like, I think Victor Ashkenazi is probably a master of this, though I, like, struggle to actually, I mean, he would certainly say that he is. And I talk to him, <laughs> and I can see it sometimes, you know, and it's, it's, but I, like, don't actually understand his game as well as him or why he's making these adjustments. But I know that's how he thinks about it. Like, I know mm -hmm. he's trying to steer it into something that he thinks is going to be more difficult for his opponent or maybe something that's going to be easier for him to play or just like is going to extend the game into more decisions like you can see like sometimes there's like two very close plays and he's spending time trying to like figure out which way he wants to go or is happy to make a small error to take it into some territory that he thinks is going to be more beneficial later and yeah. so he's one that can easily make a mistake on the second roll you know um but that's just not how he's thinking about it so so that's fine for him <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah well you're gonna be losing a certain amount of equity anyway but uh yeah. i think it, it depends whether your objective is to get a low pr or to yeah. uh, win more so although yeah. you would have to get that having a lower pr would mean winning more but yeah. not necessarily i think i think this tilted me so much as like someone who studies the second roles and stuff but he had an interview with this business guy i forget who he was and i remember they were playing backgammon as like a backdrop for the interview and yeah. for whatever reason the guy got to open with double fives and Victor rolls like a four or three or something like that and split with it. And I was just like, <laughs> how can you split? <laughs> five five. You can't do this. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm sure it made sense to him. <laughs> True. All right. All right. Well, I think we got right. back having to play. Thanks so much, James. This has been a blast. Thanks for having me on. I look yeah. forward to playing you. May the best man win. Yeah, you'll be posting about the videos as they come out. I will as well. So keep an eye on YouTube and all these channels. And, and we'll, I'm glad to have a reason to do some more play and explains to everybody. So, so yeah, let's kick it off, man. Thanks, James. All right. Let's do it. All right. Bye now. All right. So I need.